Happy Friday. So in the last video of the series in part two, we discussed how to separate the black mass before going to magnet. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about what we do after that, which is the magnet separation and what type of magnet that we typically would like to use for this. And we're also going to uh, also discuss the, the lamination mill after this. So in our last video, we ended with our black mass. So we ended up with dry material because we went to the dryer and then we ended up with black mass. So your black mass that is gonna come out of this is we mentioned is your cleanest, it's already out. And now we have this dry material that has steel in it. So typically I'd like to use a drum magnet and I like to use the vibratory with the overhead magnet. And we'll, we'll put a link in the video here of another video that we made that goes through all the different magnets that we have. We have cross belt, over band, uh, uh, drum, drum over. And in this case here, we're using the drum over. The reason why I like this, if you have the space and if you can pull it off, is because as the material is going through, the, through here, it jumps up to the magnet and then it releases it on the other side. So your steel ends up coming down here and all of your good stuff, which is your copper, your aluminum, your black mass, your plastics falls through here and does not jump up and go over. It gives you a chance of the material to, as it's jumping up, if there's particles that are not supposed to jump up, it gives it a chance to fall back down. So that's why we like using the drum. A lot of drums, and we can go, you can see that in the other video, a lot of times the material goes over the face of the drum and falls down, but in this case, we prefer to use it where it goes up. Now, after you've removed your steel, now you have your dry material, your black mass, you've removed your steel. So this part has been done. And now what you're doing is you have the material that is gonna go into a dosing hopper and then from there into the DLAM. And the reason you want a dosing hopper is because you want this DLAM mill to be full of material. The way the DLAM mill works is as the material is going through it, it rubs up against itself. So the material, if you just feed it a little bit, the air is pulling it through the DLAM mill. If you have a light piece of copper, a paper, or anything like that, as it's going through, it's just it's just going to, uh, to float through and the blades are hardly gonna make anything on it. So by having a dosing hopper and fully feeding this DLAM mill, the material rubs up on itself. The copper from batteries is as thin or thinner than a human hair. So as you're going through this process, this, this copper here as it's going through, you really wanna get it to roll on itself because if you cut it into small pieces, all you end up having is a small flake. That small flake, once it reaches the air tables further downstream, it can't separate. You're just gonna float or fly right out of the back. Or if it gets caught in the airstream, it's gonna go up in your bag house. So you're really trying to densify all your products. At this point, we've already removed the best of the black mass, and we're trying to densify the material so we can separate the other product. So dosing hopper into the DLAM mill, and what happens here is after the DLAM mill, we're gonna go to the next step, which is a screener, and we're gonna talk about that in the next video. So dosing hopper being very important here because you want to feed that DLAM mill and you want that DLAM mill to be full under load once you're feeding it. So hope this is helpful. Stay tuned for part four. Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one. Happy Friday.